Now let's get more on our top story about rebates for GPs. We did ask several government ministers to join us this morning on the programme. None were available. Yesterday, the Health Minister, Susan Lee, issued this statement and it was around the fact that the Labour government, uh, the Labour Party, sorry, has said it will now uh, block these measures in the Senate. This is the statement. Labour's announcement that it will turn its back on measures encouraging doctors to spend more time with their patients is a sneaky backflip all about politics, not patients. Joining us from Brisbane is Catherine King, the opposition health spokeswoman. Uh, Catherine, many thanks for your time this morning. Perhaps uh, could you, initially, you. Uh, initially respond to that statement put out by the health minister? Well, frankly, if the new health minister was serious about these measures, she would have picked up the phone and actually spoken to the Labor Party about these measures. Uh, we were using the summer to consider uh, what the government had put forward. We wanted to talk to doctors' groups, unlike the government. We actually do like to consult with the people uh, who they are asking to implement their measures. Uh, wanted to talk to doctors' groups, wanted to talk to patients' groups and get our head around these measures. Uh, you would have thought the government and the new health minister would have picked up the phone and talked to us uh, if she was serious about uh, wanting to, wanting to uh, articulate these measures with us and she hasn't done so. I think she's actually been on leave. Let's go through these issues in two parts. Bill Shorten yesterday said that uh, you do support the need for shorter visits, so people that need to maybe only see the doctor for under 10 minutes, but you are going to block this co-payment. Why? Firstly, sure. take the first one. What has persuaded you that those shorter visits are feasible? Well, what we understand um, from doctor organisations is that, in essence, what this will mean, as of Monday, that the rebate for short consultations, which have now been uh, redefined to be under 10 minutes, will be reduced by $20. That's quite a substantial drop. That means for any patient who is uh, accessing, so if you're a concession card patient uh, or a uh, non-concession card patient and a doctor is not bulk billing you, then you will have to pay that extra gap or, or make up that extra extra gap uh, or you'll get less back in your rebate. So that means immediately a $20 hit for patients across the board. It also means for doctors potentially if they do continue to bulk bill some of those patients they're potentially going to have to charge the patients they're already charging front money to uh, extra money to make up that income. Now that has a substantial impact uh, on out-of-pocket costs for patients. It also puts again this idea of a barrier in the way of people accessing uh, what is the most efficient part of our health system where you in fact actually want people to go to stay well uh, and to manage their chronic disease. So it really is again just the GP tax by stealth. Uh, what they've done is still attempt to recoup exactly the same amount of money as they have from their original proposal uh, but this in fact looks, uh, looks on, uh, on all of the surface of it uh, to be far worse than that original proposal mm -hmm. in out-of-pocket costs for what, patients. Yeah, now what patients do you b believe would be most adversely affected? Well, we know already from evidence of the, the uh, latest data of GP visits that it is often uh, the most vulnerable patients who are on low incomes who are more likely to defer a doctor visit because of costs. We know uh, that already between 8 to 12 per cent of patients actually do defer going to see a GP or put off going to see a GP uh, because of cost uh, and that ex is exacerbated. All of the studies will show you it is the patients with the least means uh, that are the most affected when cost factors come into play with your general practice. What about the emergency departments? Do you think uh, we've already seen that trend for people who are being charged an out-of-pocket expense front up to the emergency uh, wards? Do you think that's going to be... I mean, it's only going to be a month before potentially you'll vote on this legislation. What do you think that impact will be within that month? Well, look, there's no doubt that this measure will drive patients into emergency departments. Absolutely no doubt about that at all. I think many state departments on the government's original GP tax had done modelling around that and expected that they would see an increase. Uh, this proposal, in fact, uh, makes that even worse and more likely uh, that that will occur. So we've seen the government already slash over, uh, you know, over $50 billion out of our public hospital system, abandon uh, measures to improve emergency department waiting times, and now they're, in fact, actually 
actually putting further a measure in place that's going to put further pressure on our emergency departments. Now, this will come in, into effect on Monday unless the government withdraws. It's already gazetted the regulation. It, it can choose to withdraw it. Uh, but we know that this is the second attempt it's had to get its GP tax through. This won't be the last one. Uh, hopefully it will get uh, disallowed in the Senate, but that's not going to happen until the second week in February. Uh, but I, I suspect they'll be back again. And to that point, what are the process? What, what, how else could they go via the back door potentially, do you believe? Well, who knows? You know, this government was pretty sneaky about this second attempt. Uh, obviously, waiting till the parliament rose, uh, you know, making sure that there wasn't uh, proper proper ability for the parliament to have scrutiny of this before we went on to uh, the so the parliamentary recess. Uh, uh, who knows what they'll do next? Frankly, I think the only way we can guarantee the safety or the uh, protection and continuation of Medicare is to get rid of this government. They've got a couple of years to go, and who knows what they're going to try next. Catherine King, uh, uh, what would you do if you were in government? Uh, we've seen a very big deterioration in the budgetary position. How would you, uh, I guess, get the public to pay more for, the, for their health care because at the end of the day it isn't a bottomless pit? Well, I think the first thing is to say the fundamental principle of Medicare is that it's a universal health insurance scheme where people pay into according to their means and draw down to on according to their health care needs. So that principle is absolutely fundamental and must be at the core of our health system. What the government's been trying to do is introduce far more user pays and obviously then look at how you make Medicare just into a residual system, not a system for all. And that's obviously what part of this of these continuation of their attacks on general practice practice is about. Now when we're in government, and we've got to remember it isn't that long ago uh, we were actually in government, that this government's only been in for a year and a half and it's already wreaking uh, havoc across the healthcare system. We did make some very tough decisions when it came to the health portfolio budget, but those were decisions that were made that didn't attack patients in the way this government is doing. We did things like means testing, the private health insurance rebate, something the, the now government fought tooth and nail. We made significant changes to the pharmaceutical benefit schemes where we had pharmacists um, you know, campaigning against us in the last federal election uh, because of those changes and they realised billions of dollars of savings in the health portfolio. We did that across portfolios. We've seen reports I think just yesterday that the government's ignoring uh, a, a, a substantial report on potential savings in the health system and all of the agencies, in fact the um, areas where the department is, the safety and quality areas, uh, all of those areas that are in fact actually about trying to eliminate waste in our health system, this government has actually abolished. So the COAG Reform Council, uh, all of the work that we were doing trying to get more efficient, uh, efficiency into our public hospitals, uh, that's not the way you actually reform our healthcare system and certainly we'll be looking at how you can reintroduce some of those very good measures around getting agreement, having good consultation with specialists, with GPs about how you can get savings. But what we will also be doing is making sure those savings are reinvested back into the healthcare system, not ripping $3.5 billion out of the healthcare system, which is what this government's doing. And that doesn't make the healthcare system sustainable at all. And how do you, how do you propose uh, that double dipping, that uh, what some believe is a rorting of a system where a doctors you know, just get patients to come back to get, say, test results, which they could easily just have emailed to them or sent to them on, or you know given to them over the telephone and and, and the system's well, paying I think for that. It's sure. Yeah, look, I think it's really important to actually understand what happens in general practice. And I've spent a huge amount, I've literally spent the last year, uh, every time I visit a community or a town across the country, actually, I make a point of going in uh, to a GP practice and having a chat to the GPs there. It is a really complex area of public policy. And GPs, it's not just about often getting a script re re uh, renewed. Often what's happening when GPs are seeing patients, they're actually saying, well, you've been on this script for this period of time. What, what else can we do? What, are, what other measures do we need to take into effect to manage what's happening with this chronic condition? How do you actually use the opportunity of consultations to make sure you're encouraging people to quit smoking, you're having a discussion around weight loss, you're having a discussion around, uh, around exercise, you're also checking blood pressure, cholesterol. So doctors do all of that and that's actually part of what their job is, is actually around keeping people well. So you've got to be really careful if you just focus on time and sure there is the issue, it's a very 
small issue. It's not a large, uh, large number of doctors who do it. Where you do have churning, uh, and you do see that. And certainly, uh, when we're in government, we did try and look at uh, how you can make sure if you saw doctors who were uh, rotting the system, uh, maybe bringing in some tougher penalties on that. But really, you've got to understand what happens in general practice first. And what the government's trying to do is a pretty blunt instrument. And if you know, they're kidding themselves if they're they're trying to trying to kid everybody by saying it's about quality medicine. It's not about that at all. Catherine, thanks so much for joining us. Really good to talk to you this morning, Beverly.